Hey guys, Steve here at SKS Props, and today we're making Krieg's Buzz Axe from Borderlands. Welcome to the shop. If you're new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button because I'm going to be coming back with lots more tips and tricks for prop and costume fabrication. In today's build, we're making Krieg's Buzz Axe from Borderlands. Now, I made this weapon in the past, but I did a full resin copy. And the unfortunate thing is nowadays with a lot of the new con regulations, resin weapons just are not allowed. So I thought it'd be a great opportunity to go back, revisit it, and make it all out of HD foam. Now this particular one does have a spinning blade on there, but it is not motorized. Again, that's another thing conventions are starting to have an issue with. So this is con safe, but it still can have a cool thing for shots. Now I'm going to show you guys all the steps it took to put this thing together. We got a lot to do, so let's get started. The first thing I did was cut out the template that I had created in Photoshop. Now because the additional armor obscures part of the handle, I was able to draw that onto the template and cut that out separate. This template was then transferred onto some 10mm HD foam with a ballpoint pen three times. And then I cut out all three pieces on the bandsaw. I decided to use a quarter inch metal rod to give the handle a little more stability. This metal rod was bent to shape using my bench vise and a little bit of elbow grease. I continued to check for fit against the foam handle and then marked with a permanent marker where the next angle would need to bend. Once the curves were correct, I used a cutting wheel and my disc sander to cut off and round over the round bar. I take the bar back to the workbench and trace it onto the middle layer of the handle. This section is then cut out and you can see how the bar will be sandwiched in between all the layers. I need this handle to be pretty durable, so I decide to use barge contact cement for my main adhesive. A thin layer of barge is applied to all the pieces and then left to dry. Bob Smith super glue is put along the perimeter of the middle piece and then it is flipped and placed upon the outside foam. PVC pipe is used as a roller and this ensures that the contact cement adheres properly. The metal bar is then added to check for fit. As you can tell, there's a little bit of wiggle room, so I'm gonna use some lightweight foam clay to fill the gaps. The foam clay is kneaded, rolled out, and then pressed into the crevice of the middle piece. The metal rod is then pressed down into the foam clay and additional foam clay is added on top of that to fully encase it. Barge and super glue are applied to the final piece of the handle and it is carefully put into place. Once all the adhesives have fully cured, I was able to take the handle over the belt sander and start to refine the shape. Now the foam clay on the interior will eventually dry over time. After the main shape had been established using the belt sander, I then went in with medium grit sanding drum on my Dremel to start refining all the edges. I then moved on to the wood grain by using a medium grit sanding drum and then switching over to a stone bit to really define all the lines in the wood. You can get a very organic feel to it by continuing to flip the handle around and varying your pressure. I had a little bit of battle damage and started to smooth everything out with a sanding sponge. And you can see in this harsh light here that it's really starting to take on that organic wood texture. The main part of the blade is drawn onto some 10 millimeter foam with a ballpoint pen and then rotated to complete the full circle. Each one of the teeth are then very carefully cut out on the bandsaw. I really want this blade to spin on the weapon but I do not want it motorized so the easiest way to do that I feel is to take apart and use a fidget spinner. The spinner is traced onto the foam making sure that it's precisely in the middle and then I use a hole saw to cut out the general shape. I want it to be pretty tight so the fidget spinner doesn't have any room to wobble. Once I'm determined that the thing looks pretty good spinning around, I take it over to the sanding station and start to refine all the teeth using my Dremel and a medium grit sanding drum. Once the blade had been heat treated, I went ahead and glued it into place using some Bob Smith super glue and some accelerant, being mindful not to get any of this down into the bearings. Then I go ahead and test it on the wooden dowel that will be used in the final version. This is Krieg's upgraded version of the axe, and so of course it does have the additional armor and blades. These are cut out from the template and then transferred onto some 6mm HD foam. I need 9 blades in all, and the edges of these are tapered using a Dremel. Every time I add something to the blade, I continue to check it for a balance and to make sure that it still properly spins. There's a lot going on on the top of this weapon, and to make sure that it all stays in place and is stable, I decided to use some 1 inch strips of styrene. These are then drilled out for the precise diameter of the wooden dowel that I'll be using. Having this as an understructure for all the armor that goes on top also allows me to make sure that I have clearance for the blade to spin freely. I go back to my foam pile and pick up some 2mm HD foam. This will be used to cover up the fidget spinner so it's not seen in the final version. 
As a prop maker, I usually have several boxes of random parts laying around, and in this case, I was able to find some plastic spacers that worked out great for this build. Once the main structure had been completed, I then started to work on all the armor embellishments that'll go on top. These were then cut out from the templates and transferred onto some 6mm HD foam. Once all these pieces had been transferred onto the foam, they were then cut out on the bandsaw and then mocked up to make sure that it all was to the correct scale. Now I knew that some of these armor pieces needed to be thicker for the final version, so I transferred parts of them to 10mm HD foam. Once they were all sized up, I was able to take them over and sand down the appropriate angles. All the additional flashing could then be taken off just using a stone bit. These sections were then glued to the original 6mm foam template that I had cut out. These same techniques were also applied to the top section of the buzz axe. Once I figured out exactly where this top section was going to go, the lower armor was then placed on top and traced around. Now some of this additional foam was removed so that the lower section could fit more flush. Super glue and accelerant is then used to glue the top and bottom sections directly to the one inch strips of styrene that I had applied earlier. Once again, because we're adding additional pieces to this, I'm still making sure that the blade is able to spin. To make sure that the back sections of the top part of this armor are gonna stay rigid, I cut some three quarter inch strips of styrene. These are also glued into place and this will make sure that the blade doesn't rub against these in the final version. Now because this is the real world and not the video game, of course the mechanics of this and the way it looks in the art aren't necessarily going to line up. So I have to add an additional spacer on the back to make sure that there is enough clearance for the additional blades to rotate properly. I also cut off an additional piece of styrene and heat form this into the shape of a U. This will make sure that the blade doesn't come in contact with these upper parts and that I've got enough room for it to spin freely. Now that the engineering side of it is established, I can go in with my rotary tools and start cleaning up all the harsh edges on the foam. The bolt sections and additional strips of foam can now be glued in as well. So you can see with all this, it's a little bit thicker than what it is in the game, but it works for cosplay. And just to see how fast this thing can spin, I turn my shop vac on the blade. For all the greeblies and additional nuts and bolts that are going to be on this weapon, lucky for me, I already have a bunch of molds that are sitting around that I use in a daily basis. So I'm going to resin cast all of mine, but you could easily make them out of foam as well. All of these little pieces are glued into place. Now because of the domes that are on these, I actually have to go in with my rotary tool and grind them all flat. Strips of 2mm foam are glued into place to finish off the detailing on this section of the armor. I'm going to be using 20mm HD foam round dowels to simulate the dynamite sticks that will be on the top of the buzz axe. Each stick is cut to approximately 6 inches on the bandsaw. To fabricate the armor on the front of the axe, I mirror my template and then glue together the front section of the blade. To simulate the angles that are on this metal piece, I V-cut the back of the foam using a Dremel and then glue those gaps shut. This really gives a nice crisp side detail and you can see how this metal piece will wrap around the handle. Once it's checked for fit, it's also glued into place using some Bob Smith super glue. I wrap the round dowels with 2mm HD foam. This will both simulate a thickness to it and give it some additional layers of detail. The end of the dynamite stick is supposed to be recessed just a little bit, so I use a Forstner bit to remove a little bit of material. I go ahead and check the size before I make all of the rest. Each stick is supposed to have a little lip at the top, so to achieve this look I do the score and heat method where I score it lightly with a razor blade and then heat it with a heat gun. This process does put off some fumes, so do make sure that you are doing this in a well vented area and you have your respirator. Once all my dynamite sticks are complete, I can start gluing them into place to match the artwork. The dynamite that sticks off the side was also cut, detailed, and glued into place. To simulate the fuses for all the dynamite sticks, I'm going to be using some 10mm HD foam round dowels. These round dowels ended up being the perfect size and I was able just to cut them and match the artwork. You know me guys, I love painting, but I really enjoy how an HD foam prop looks just raw. 
I started cutting strips of 2mm foam. These would simulate these straps that will hold the dynamite to the side of the buzz axe. Nothing special here, they are just cut to length and glued into place. To make the cylinder at the top of the buzz axe, I used some 6mm foam and then rounded it over. I then used some 10mm foam and cut circles out to cap the front and the back. For this piece to fit flush on the base of the buzz axe, I took my Dremel and flattened off the details on the base of the cylinder. To finish it off, I took some scraps of 10mm to make the prongs that come out that heat the blade. The cylinder looks as though it has two straps that are kind of holding it into place. One is just a basic metal strap, the other one looks like galvanized hanger tape. Now to simulate this, I took my leather tools so I knew exactly where the holes were at, and then I used a leather punch to actually punch all the holes. These are the kind of small details that you put into it that really make the piece. Both these straps were glued into place and I even added a little worm screw at the very top. The front armor on this buzz axe has a whole bunch of little spikes all over it and to simulate this I took some 15mm triangle dowels and cut them at angles to replicate the spikes. Just like the armor on the midway section of this axe, I took the same mirroring techniques from my template and made the foot armor as well. This piece was cut out on a bandsaw and the v-groove was also put into the bottom of that to give it that harsh angle on the front. Once I determined it was the right size, I went ahead and glued it directly to the foam handle. One of my favorite parts is always adding character to a prop, so once all the armor pieces had been attached, I took it over to the sanding station and used a stone bit to add all the battle damage. Alright guys, we're done with the construction of this Borderlands Buzz Axe with a con-friendly spinning blade. Now this of course is Kree's upgraded version, so it's got all of the dynamite and additional armor on here. If you're going to make his base version, just strip all of this down. From here on out, we're going to be sealing and painting it. For sealing it, we're going to be using two coats of Plasti Dip, doing a base coat of Rattle Can on here, then hand painting it using Liquitex Heavy Body Acrylics. The buzz axe was coated with two layers of Plasti Dip and left to dry. Some Rattle Can Rust-Oleum colors were applied as a base layer for the paint. I started using these larger jars of colors that I use more often through Liquitex Heavy Body. This particular one is Mars Black. We're going to use a one inch mop brush and do a complete wash over the entire surface. This wash technique is done a couple of times making sure that the paint gets down into all the crevices and details that we've added. After that I use a hair dryer to lock in those colors so we can add additional layers on top. Going back with that one inch mop brush I use the cadmium red. Now here I'm not being too careful, I want that crazy over the top look that Borderlands has. This red is applied to all of the armor on the top, middle and foot of the buzz axe. And with cadmiums a little bit goes a long way. After that has been allowed to dry I go back in with a half inch filbert brush and start to highlight the outsides of the armor pieces. Now to be honest, the colors for Krieg's axe are pretty boring, and I wanted to do the one from his initial trailer. So that's why we're going with this cadmium red and a brilliant blue color scheme. The brilliant blue is also used for the one inch mop brush, and if you notice the bristles are very open, I want that sporadic look that that will give it. And the nice thing about heavy body acrylics like this is one pass is all you need. So I can start developing some contrast, I decided to use a cadmium orange for my dynamite sticks. And that is applied with also a half inch filbert brush. I mix some unbleached titanium and Mars Black to come up with kind of a neutral gray for the straps that hold the dynamite to the buzz axe. Then by adding some Liquitex heavy body parchment to that, I can start to develop highlights. To paint the fuses, I use a straight Mars Black. I decided to add more paint to the handle, especially in the crevices, because I wanted this wood grain texture to really stand out. A mixture of unbleached titanium, raw sienna, and Mars Black is applied with the mop brush over the entire surface. One thing to note is each layer is locked in with a hair dryer. For the next layer of highlight on the handle, it's a mixture of unbleached titanium and parchment. Now that we've got our base, I kind of want that watercolor look that Borderlands has, so I take some unbleached titanium and parchment and I use a liner brush and really start to water it down, developing the highlights. After that I take a brush with just water and I feather all of these out. That process is repeated on all the armor pieces as well, but this time we're using the cadmium orange that I used on the dynamite now on the armor.
For anyone that's ever painted miniatures, this is the exact same process. Start off dark and move all the way through your color scale. Borderlands has a very distinctive cell shaded look, and to get that we're going to be using Mars Black and several different liner brushes. To start off, I'm going to use a detail brush and paint in all the battle damage on the armor. After that, I can start outlining each individual piece of armor with the same Mars Black. Now with this process, don't think it needs to be perfect. If you mess up, just take a brush with some water, scrub it on there, wipe it off, and do it again. This is where you really need to start thinking, if this was a comic book, where would all your lines come in for shading? Iridescent rich silver is a metallic and it's added to the blades, the cylinder at the top, the straps, and all the screws. Borderlands highlights are just as vibrant as their cell shading, so in this case I'm using parchment for all of my highlights. I'm using a lot of water and a detail brush. Just like the other technique, you come back with a brush that has no pigment, just water, and feather that out. This is another one of those techniques that you can definitely overdo it, just kind of be mindful of where your highlights are at. For the fabric wrap on the handle, I'm going to go with some 1 inch stretch nylon. This stuff's pretty easy to work with, I just lay down some hot glue and wrap it around the handle. The top section has a little bit more fabric than the bottom, so be mindful of that if you're building this. After the fabric has been laid down, I then go back with some parchment and I start doing washes on that to again give it that watered colored look. Now the fabric will absorb quite a bit of your paint, so you're going to need to do this process a couple of times. So you guys can see the steps that it takes to put together Krieg's Buzz Axe with a con safe moving blade. Now if you guys are Borderlands fans or if you have friends that are, be sure to share this video with them and with the community because I would love for more people to attempt to build this one. Remember again the templates are free, they are over in the description section. And if you guys are building props and costumes with HD foam, be sure to continue to tag me on Twitter and Instagram because it's awesome seeing your guys' progress pics. For you guys that are again new to the channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Be sure to swing back by again for more tips and tutorials. Until then, thanks for stopping by.